Of the food that we grow annually, 40% is lost or wasted. Global food loss and waste is responsible for 10% of greenhouse gas emissions. At the same time, rates of food insecurity continue to skyrocket. In 2022, nearly 828 million people faced acute food insecurity, and that's an increase of more than 60% since 2019. Unfortunately, these numbers are expected to continue to grow. So are there opportunities and, for that matter, reasons to disrupt the linear model of our current food system? Welcome to Feedstuffs in Focus, our podcast taking a look at the big issues affecting the livestock, poultry, grain, and animal feed industries. I'm your host, Sarah Muirhead. This episode is sponsored by United Animal Health, a leader in animal health and nutrition. You can learn more about United Animal Health and how they're working to advance animal science worldwide by visiting their website at unitedanh.com. In this episode of Feedstuffs in Focus, we revisit a presentation by Pete Pearson, Senior Director, Food Loss and Waste for the World Wildlife Fund. Pete gave a presentation during our recent Food Waste to Animal Feed virtual conference, and he talked about the introduction of circularity into food cultivation and production. I think what would be great is to start by just framing and, and, and looking at the lens through which World Wildlife Fund approaches this issue and really the entire food system. Um, so as the senior director and, and global initiative lead for food loss and waste, I report through what we call our food practice at World Wildlife Fund. Um, this is a global team that looks at why uh, the, the intersection of food systems, both from a production and a farming standpoint, from a loss and waste standpoint, but also a consumption and diet standpoint. You, you really have to look at those three major pillars to understand the impacts and again, why World Wildlife Fund cares about this so much. So at our core, World Wildlife Fund, our vision is a world where people and nature thrive. And I think this is what most everybody associates our brand to, right? It's to nature. It's to making sure that biodiversity thrives on the planet. But most people don't understand this connection of how it impacts, of how food systems impact nature. And I think this is really important. So when we look at our livestock and our feed system, um, and again, we have many experts on our team that just focus on livestock and feed. And so I'm, I'm representing that team today as part of our overall food practice and our food team. But the vision for that team is a global sustainable protein system, which also conserves nature, stimulates thriving communities and supports nutritious diets. Now, a lot of this information, I'm sure, is not new for many of you, but again, I think it helps to frame the lens through which WBF looks at this issue. Um, we know livestock and feed represents about 12 to 16 percent of global greenhouse gas emissions, and most of that comes from the feed system. It comes from growing commodity crops and feed that goes to animals. Now, unfortunately, we, we look at the trends of biodiversity loss and the global land use and the change of that. So the conversion of either grasslands or forest to farmlands or grazing is the number one cause for biodiversity loss. So that's the key here. That's the reason why World Wildlife Fund is so engaged on this issue. And it's why actually food systems and food is one of the top three priorities for the entire global organization. We also know that 20 to 30 percent of global freshwater consumption comes from livestock and feed production. But here's the important part that we don't <clears throat> we don't take lightly. And this is something really embedded in our strategy. We know that livestock and feed systems support 1.3 billion people globally. So you can't just say we, you know, th this is something where it's a really important livelihoods issue. And <clears throat> that has to be part of our equation. So again, this is the overall lens we look at this issue through. Now, our livestock team um, has has been, I mean, really busy last year. We, we, we did a summit, a feed summit. And I think it's important to know that we want to function as one of the key conveners within this space. 
and somebody that represents this, this overall mission of nature, the environment and livelihoods. Our role is to, we feel, elevate the awareness of feed's footprint and the practices that impact it, strengthen supply chain. We, when we have, we have a vast uh, uh, connections to the private sector and we have many, many partnerships across the private sector and within government and really share these pre-competitive learnings and best practices, right? I think given our brand, given the fact that we come at this from a relatively unique angle, I think we can help the convening space and we can help um, strengthen awareness on a path forward. Now, our number one um, focal point is halting land conversion. I mean, we are in this game to make sure that we don't shift more grasslands and forests um, out of nature and impacting biodiversity. And so really what we're talking about is freezing the footprint and being able to use more of what we have currently produced. And this is where circularity is going to play a massive and key role. You can't do this if you have a linear system. The other part of the equation is carbon sequestration, right? Making sure that we have uh, nature-based solutions that are actually pulling carbon in and, and, and sequestering that carbon. And then all, obviously too, there's the reduction of emissions that have to be happening within agriculture and really along the entire supply chain. But again, circularity is gonna play a very, very key role. Now, I spend a lot of my time focusing on food waste farm to fork. And again, by the numbers, 40% of all food we produce globally is lost or wasted. This was a, an updated estimate that World Wildlife Fund came to as part of a report called Driven to Waste, which we published in 2021. We also know that food waste, so just the food waste that we produce and, and, and dump could represent as much as 10% of global greenhouse gas emissions just by itself, just the wasted food we produce. And then here's the other part that I think is, is striking. We, we have to recognize that the world does not view food waste as a carbon issue yet. And this is a problem. So only 21% of countries globally have food loss and waste in their nationally determined contributions, their, their climate strategies. And so we've got a lot of work to do in terms of raising awareness that food waste and this circular system that we're trying to achieve is a climate issue. It is a carbon issue. And we've got to elevate that in terms of how governments and, and different countries view this issue. <clears throat> um, one thing that we really key into a lot is the fact that landfills represent a massive um, amount of methane emissions. You know, typically the natural gas and petroleum industry, uh, they get a lot of attention, obviously, because they're, they're the biggest in terms of methane emissions. Um, I think second to that, uh, you have uh, cattle production, beef production, which does get a lot of attention in terms of enteric fermentation and the methane emissions from that. But often left out of the equation is the fact that number three is methane emissions from landfill globally. And when we look at that in more detail, we see that food waste represents a huge amount of that in terms of the cause of methane emissions. And that's generated from just the breakdown of that material buried and sunken in the ground. And that methane emission that happens for years and years and years, decades sometimes. And so this is something that I think we have to address and we have to recognize what are we doing? Like, this is crazy, right? We are taking valuable resources, literally dumping it in the hole in the ground and creating another climate problem from that. Now, the things that I also focus on are the fact that cities represent a massive share of this uh, overall landfill emission. 66% um, of, you know, urban food waste is generated from cities, 500 million tons. We, we, we estimate or only 12% of that is diverted from landfills. And here's the thing that I just key into every time too, less than 2% of available nutrients embedded in the food that we throw away are recycled. Like this is an incredible loss of nutrient value and the market 
the, the global economic system just does not recognize this yet. And again, this is the imperative for circular systems moving forward. Now, we've, we've, we've reported on a couple studies over the last couple of years. So our team on the food loss and waste side and our feed team and our livestock team at World Wildlife Fund, we've had several different papers that we put out. The one that our team did was uh, called No Food Left Behind. This is an entire series of reports that we run on food loss and waste at the farm level. And we looked at the trade-offs and benefits of waste to feed pathways. We've been doing most of this work within chicken supply chains, um, really looking hard at, you know, how do you improve poultry systems and especially systems that really require that confinement. Like it's, it's really tough to have production at scale unless you have confinement, unless you have um, the ability to bring that feed in. Um, and, you know, what we found was that there are there are obviously trade-offs when you when you look at different types of systems, whether it's black soldier fly or uh, you know bakery waste to feed, um, and you never get this totally perfect system. But I think waste to feed or food resources to feed, I don't even like to call it waste anymore. That represents a huge opportunity for us to solve the landfill issue by creating economic incentives for grocery stores, for restaurants, for cities to be pulling that material out of landfills and finding ways to sort, separate, make sure it's safe product and process that into new material. Now, <clears throat> based on our calculations, we're not going to be, you know, making a huge dent if we take food waste and put it into animal feed in terms of the entire feed system. Like we're not going to be offsetting 20, 30, 40% of all the feed that we need for animals. But I think it represents enough of an impact where you can start to reduce the burden on land conversion, right? We start to reduce that burden to continue to convert grasslands and forests. And we also try to solve the landfilling issue and the methane emissions from the waste system. Um, I will just say like, we are fully committed to working with partners. Um, one of our largest projects in the United States is our Northern Great Plains program, where we work hand in hand with ranchers in the Northern Great Plains, in Montana, South Dakota. <clears throat> and we are trying to find systems in which ranchers and conservation organizations like World Wildlife Fund can be working together to really solve our most pressing issues. And I think it gets really fun. It gets innovative. We, when we start to look at the actual solutions, we get into things like black soldier flies, creating these circular systems from the food waste that's generated from hotels and restaurants. Um, that we're also starting to look at things like invasive species, right? So things that have a direct impact on biodiversity, like you know, massive numbers of carp and uh, issues with um, you know invasive species in our waterways. How do we harvest those? How do we take those and potentially use those as feed for something else while also solving the biodiversity issues that these invasive species cause? So for us, it's a really fun, creative area to work in because there's so much potential and it's like we're at this very beginning stage and it's exciting. The one thing I'll leave you with is uh, we've also started to look at impact investing. So World Wildlife Fund has created a, a separate LLC called WWF Impact. And one of the areas that we are both raising money for, but then creating investment portfolios for is circularity. Um, and so we've been doing diligence on companies that are taking food resources and turning them into animal feed. And ultimately our goal is to actually be making investments as an investor, as, as a seed investor, pre-series A, into companies and startups, just because we feel like this is a very, um, this is a, this is a, this is something that really needs that investment. And it's often hard to get investment for this at that early stage. And so WBF Impact is a vehicle that we're pretty excited about. And it's one that, again, is going to be focused on circularity. Our thanks to Pete Pearson of the World Wildlife Fund for that insight. If you would like to view more of our recent Food Waste to Animal Feed virtual conference, you can watch it in its entirety or various sessions within. Simply click on the link on your screen or visit feedstuffs.com. This episode has been sponsored by United Animal Health, a leader in animal health and nutrition. 
You can learn more about United Animal Health and how they're working to advance animal science worldwide by visiting their website at unitedanh.com. I'm Sarah Muirhead, and you have been listening to Feedstuffs in Focus. If you would like to hear more conversations about some of the big issues affecting the livestock, poultry, grain, and animal feed industries, subscribe to this podcast on your favorite podcast channel, including Apple and Google Podcasts. Until next time, have a great day and thank you for listening.